James, welcome to Enid Buzz, and uh, I'm also going to put you on the podcast for that Buzz guy. So welcome to both shows at the same time. Thanks for having me. I'm I'm very very excited about everything that's going on, and excited to be on uh, your podcast and your radio. And I've watched several of your interviews, uh, trying to feel out how everything is, and I think you do an amazing job. So kudos to you and your business and everything that's going on. Well, thanks. Well, well, kudos to you. So tell everybody. Um, so somebody may be watching this right now, and if they didn't read the stuff that I've posted on the post, and they're looking at you, and they're like, man, this guy looks familiar. Where do I know him from? <laughs> Tell them where they probably know you from. Yeah, so most people recognize me from the number one show on cable television for several years running, uh, Live PD, which was on A&E. Um, I worked for the Green County Sheriff's Office as a canine handler, and uh, they showcased us, broadcasted all over the world. Um, uh, they brought a lot of us officers and deputies to New York City to be uh, in host, uh, host in the studios up there to talk to the nation. And then I also participated on America's Top Dog by A&E, uh, helping develop that show and uh, was out there on that in California, had a great time with that, saw some amazing dogs and competition and talent and stuff. And um, I don't know, you know, if people have watched uh, Tyler Perry's The Haves and Have Nots, which John Schneider's on, I was actually a extra in a bar scene in there for several scenes in the bar. Uh, had a lot of fun down there. I actually passed John Schneider, didn't get to talk to him, but I thought, man, there goes a guy that I have been watching on my television since I was a little boy. As many so, of us have. Yes, yes. Um, and then uh, there was um, there was another show. Um, where we just discussed uh, what was going on during live PD and the events and stuff like that. Um, so it has been really, really good to let the public see what law enforcement does. Yeah, and that's another thing that I noticed is you're on a lot of news programs where they like to interview um, you know, law enforcement and you're on a lot of those and, and with all of the upheaval and stuff going on, um, it's just great to have people like you get out there representing the guys in blue and not always having this bad connotation and stuff like that. So how often are you on the air like per week for, for those shows? Does that happen quite a bit? It does, yes. So um, a good friend of mine, Ashley Banfield, she's on uh, Banfield on News Nation. Um, she's on every night, so I try to uh, get on her show at least once a week, oh, and then uh, also doing Court TV once a week as well, oh, okay. and both of those, you know, you can download the app, you can watch it from anywhere in the world, you can watch it on your local provider, whatever you have, Dish Network, Cable America, whatever it is, um, you can watch it on there, and it's been really good because, as you know, they, they removed Live PD from yeah. television, um, and I, I think that that does, um, I don't think that it helps us at all because everybody wants transparency right now. And I think that that was the best way to get transparency out there. I mean, when I was on the show, I was getting mail, fan mail, if you want to call it, whatever it is from all over the world, from Japan to Australia, to New Mexico, to Canada, the state of Washington, all the way down to Florida. And we had sports fans. Patrick Mahomes himself. Oh, wow. Watch live, PD. The, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And, you know, NASCAR drivers, Bubba Wallace and, and uh, Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott. And all of these people would watch us on Friday and Saturday nights and see what was going on. And they got to be part of us. And we got to be part of their family because they were watching this with their teams or their families or their kids. And we just got to be a household name, um, you know, kind of kind of like the Brady Bunch of the Dukes of Hazards. Yeah. I mean, everybody knew who Live PD was. And you can't go anywhere in the United States right now without somebody asking, you know, how's Danny Brown, one of the officers that was on there? How's Addy Perez or, you know, how's Sheriff Lamb or, or whoever the names? They know us by name and they know us where we live and where we work and how we are as people and how we treat people. Yeah. So, so do you still stay in contact with all those guys? I do. Yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, we stay in contact all the time. We've got each other's cell phone numbers. We talk all the time. Um, we try to get on the shows together and we just try to have each other's backs and support each other and help each other out. 
Um, Sheriff Lamb, he's got a new television show or, or show that he came out with called American Sheriff Network, where he has picked up where Live PD left off. Oh, well, cool. His show's not live, but he's following agencies and letting people in on the action or the lack of action, because not every call is an action call. There are some calls where it's just a, hey, you know, I don't feel good. Um, I passed out and we show up and we're assisting EMS with the call. So there's no criminal act or nothing for us to act upon, but it's something that we do go and assist with. So he's doing that. Um, I've talked to him about a canine show. So uh, when we get the followers and, and the finances, we're going to start doing a canine show and hopefully we'll be able to go around to different agencies and follow their canines. So. Ah, oh, very cool. So, yeah. so let everybody know what you're doing now. You, you and I had a quick little talk before this started, but tell everybody where you're at and kind of what you're doing these days. Yeah, so full time I work uh, for Hershen Family Enterprises as a security manager. I oversee a bunch of properties here in the Ozark Mountain region. Um, on the other side, I've got a canine business that I started back in February uh, from all of my years in training dogs, Craig Mile Canine Training. And uh, I'm actually training in eight different states right now online, wow. live. Yeah, wow. I am That's very cool. blessed. My my farthest one so far is the state of Washington. Um, I've I've trained dogs in New York, Chicago, New Mexico, Arizona, Florida, and the United Kingdom outside of the United States. Wow. Well, and so you're kind of like me. I mean, we have the these brilliant. Uh, technologies now that we didn't have when you and I were kids, but we can do business with people all over the world. I was doing business in the late nineties, doing cartoon logos for company, Japan, UK. I mean, it, it's been crazy. It's been quite a run. So uh, technology, it, it, most of the time is wonderful, you know? Yes, I so. agree. And, it, and that's what I've always said. Technology can help you or it can hurt you. Yeah. And if you're doing wrong or you're doing illegal, it can hurt you. But Guys like you and I who are out there trying to make a difference in the world, trying to project uh, what's going on out there, I think it's an amazing tool for us. And, you know, to be able to sit there and reach out to people across the United States and, and just help them with their dogs or help them better understand law enforcement or why we do things or how we do things uh, really resonates with people and they love it. Yeah. So I've got to ask you before I forget. So, uh, so I'm right here in Enid, Oklahoma, and about an hour west of here is Longdale, where you're coming to, but then about 30 minutes to the east is a little town called Perry, Oklahoma, and there's a guy there named Travis Borson. Do you know, do you happen to know Travis? I don't think so. He won one of those top dog uh, reality shows, and I can't remember, oh, okay. I don't remember which is called, but anyway, he's, he's uh, left Oklahoma and moved to New York, and he does the same thing you do, except uh, not canine, you know, I mean, for, for police, but he, he trains, uh, celebrity dogs. He's got his own show. Um, I'm not sure what channel it's on, but I didn't know if you had run into him. Um, so I thought I'd ask before, before I forgot, but, uh, you know, and I run into a lot of people. I probably have ran into him to know his name, maybe not, but, um, yeah, you know, there's, that's the thing about it is there are so many good trainers out there. So many good dog trainers out there and uh, so many good law enforcement officers. And that's what you're seeing now is a lot of these law enforcement officers are leaving uh, our profession to go to the civilian side because of everything that's going on. And it's unfortunate, but uh, you know, my time on live PD uh, allowed me to connect with guys like John Schneider uh, and do something that I never thought that I would ever do in my lifetime and just be in the same room with John Schneider. Uh, so I am extremely blessed and excited to be on this tour with him this weekend out there in Longdale. It's going to be so, good. It's so, be how, so, so how did you hook up with John Schneider? How did that all come about? I've got a personal friend of mine that is, uh, friends with his PR or his publicist. And, uh, she connected us and we just started talking and everything just kind of fell into place. You know, it was one of them things that it wasn't, well, where could we fit him in or where, how does he fit in, you know, or it was just, yeah, come on board. We'd love to have you. And uh, I'm excited to talk to him. Um, I've done a lot of acting since I was 16. So to talk to him about his acting career and his skills and just to learn from him. And I'd love to hopefully be in one of his movies and, <laughs> and uh, to go from there. So we'll see how things happen. 
That would be very cool. So, so let's talk about Longdale. You guys, John Schneider, you, a lot of his celebrity band members, everybody's coming over to Longdale, Oklahoma, the Speedway over there this weekend. You guys are going to be there for a VIP event Friday night. You're going to be there for music and racing and all kinds of stuff on Saturday for Cowboy Church on Sunday. I did see a video, I believe it's on your Twitter account. You were talking about, are you going to be doing some dog training on Friday? Yes, it'll either be, it'll probably be Friday. Um, I would like to invite people out and I'll put it up on my website, but uh, pick a place and I'll, I'll try to find a park or something that's neutral for everybody to show up, bring your dogs out and let's just have a sit down and discuss a little bit of dog psychology, uh, why your dogs are doing what they're doing. And I'll even teach you some basic stuff like a, a basic sit and, and to teach your dog to lay down which is all easily done within an hour. I don't want to take up too much of people's times because I found out this morning that I think I'm going to be driving to General Lee Friday. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. Really? So I'm How excited cool about that. that. Wow. I know. So oh. I, I'm hoping it's going to happen. Uh, I, I've, I've had all my fingers and toes crossed and uh, that has been a dream of mine. And for John to toss me the keys is, oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. So I know you're interested in NASCAR. Have you, do you, yes. have you driven before? Do you drive? Do you race at all? No, I just, I just chase people on the streets. You know, I've actually never driven on a professional course. Uh, our cars just don't go left. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that's the thing about law enforcement and I've teased, you know, I became good friends with Bubba Wallace and Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney, uh, who uh, all drive professionally for NASCAR. You know, Bubba's driving for Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin now. And, um, I've been blessed to be able to meet those guys and get to know them. And, uh, Bubba and I have actually raced on Mario Kart before. Um, I became good friends with Mike Harmon racing and, uh, they drive in the Xfinity race. And I actually got to work on their pit crew in the Daytona 500, oh, wow. uh, last year. That was amazing. Oh, so yeah. no, I have always wanted to drive a NASCAR around the track and just see how it feels. I think I'd be good at it because out here on the streets, when we're in a pursuit and people are turning, we can't predict where they're going left, right, through a field, through a fence, down a ditch, uh, off a cliff. You know, we have, we have no idea where they're going. So we have to act and react to the driver that we're chasing. And we also have to keep pedestrians in mind, other cars, you know, vehicle traffic and neighborhoods and people walking and houses and the suspect doesn't have any regard for life. They're just trying to get away so they don't go to jail. So I think I'd be good at doing it. I'd love to chase Bo Duke around uh, and see if I can catch him. Very cool. So, so if you go, if you do drive it on Friday, will it be like a two car race against somebody or, or just driving it around just to kind of get. Yeah, I think it's just driving around to kind of promote the event okay. and uh, bring awareness around there. So if people see the generally out driving, uh, they know that Bo Duke is somewhere in the area and uh, John is John has just been so nice and so gracious during this entire uh, event. And I just hope that everybody can come out and, and support him and support all the amazing talent that's going to be out there. I have been listening uh, to some of these musicians, some of who I had never heard before, and they are they are extremely talented. I'm so excited to be able to listen to them live listen to John Schneider live. They, we've got helicopter tours. We've got Hollywood stuntmen that's going to be setting themselves on fire and doing stunts. And it's, it's going to be great. It is going to be fun. Yeah. And so uh, Bose extravaganza.com people can go there and get tickets. I'm going to be giving away tickets. Uh, actually, I'm going to be giving away some this afternoon. I will be giving away tickets uh, all week long. And then I uh, plan on being there for the Friday night VIP event, which I'll try to maybe snag you and John at the same time and do a live. Um, Enid's probably the biggest town uh, to Longdale. So we've got about 50,000 people over here. I have a feeling you guys are probably going to come down 412 and drive through Enid on your way to Longdale. Okay. I'm not sure what day you guys are coming in, but uh, if you guys get to Enid and you make a stop, uh, you know, I, you should have my contact information. Let me know. I can, uh, you know, tell you guys where to go eat or, or come see you guys. And we could actually do a live as you guys are coming into town. But uh, I would say a lot of the people coming over are probably going to be coming from Enid. So uh, we welcome you guys to Northwest Oklahoma and uh, look forward to all the stuff going on. So what are you, uh, you going to be doing on Saturday? What, what are you personally going to be doing on Saturday? 
Saturday, I think we're just doing the uh, meet and greets at the track. I might, and, and I've got to shore this up with uh, John and his wife, Alicia, but I believe that I'm going to be doing some canine training there at the track itself. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to get John and some of the musicians involved in that that are going to be there and um, some of the stuntmen, and maybe we can just make a good time of it. It won't take long, you know, 30 minutes or an hour because John has so much amazing things going on that day with the talent and the race and him singing the national anthem and just everything that he has going on. It is an event that you don't want to miss, especially coming out of what we had last year on being locked down with COVID. John has hit the nail on the head. And I tell you what, to have this type of uh, tour and event that he's got going on across the United States, people need to get out. People want to get out. They want to feel some type of normalcy again. And this is the perfect way to do it. Yeah. And, and again, so I had interviewed John last week and when I posted the link to that video, I think it's one of my best performing posts on Facebook this year. I mean, it's gone crazy. Uh, the amount That's of people good. that are engaging with it. So I think like you say, we haven't had a lot going on in this area, although we were one of the least masked, most open areas of the country. We just didn't have a lot of outside people coming in, giving us any entertainment. So I believe people are ready to get out. And so this is way more than just a, a ra dirt racing. This is concert. This is uh, autograph signing. Like you said, stunt show, uh, meeting you, dog training, food, uh, helicopter rides. I mean, this event is going to be huge. And it's a, it's basically for the public. It's a, it's a two-day event, although they can buy tickets to the VIP of event on Friday. They are, are rather pricey uh, and limited. So uh, the tickets that I'm going to be giving away and most of the tickets that they can buy are a two-day pass uh, on Saturday and Sunday. And then Sunday is the Sunday uh, Cowboy Church and all that. But yes. uh, man, if you have, if you're watching this interview and you have not been out, uh, gotten out and done anything, number one, it's going to be super safe because it's outdoors. Uh, but uh, our area of the country, I don't, I, you know, I think, uh, we, our hospitals are clear. Everything's great. So there shouldn't be any reason for people not to get out and enjoy this and come over and meet you uh, on Friday and Saturday. So uh, any other uh, things that they can be expecting for this? Now, have you done one of these yet or is this going to be your first one? I've done uh, several meet and greets uh, since Live PD. We've, we've had uh, Live PD meet and greets here in Greene County, Missouri. Um, sheriff Lamb, who is the sheriff for Pinal County in Arizona, actually flew myself and Sheriff Arnott out to um, Pinal County, and we had a huge meet and greet out there. Um, I have I have done meet and greets uh, in different areas in Missouri, and it, it seems like a different meet and greet because whenever you go out, these people know who you are. They recognize your face, much like John, and they come up to you and they want to shake your hand. They want to thank you for your service. They want to let you know they got your back. They want to let us know how appreciative they are and they just they are so people are nice you know this this whole media hype of of the race divide and everything that's going on you know I, I think if we could get back to teaching love respect and appreciation and get the parents to start teaching that to the kids because there's not a single child out there that's born with hate in their heart hate is taught hate is learned and if we can get this hatred out of the kids hearts and, and get it out of our minds and out of our vocabulary this world would be a much better place and everybody would be able to just love each other and just and just be and I think that uh, John does a good job of that I know that he's a good Christian man and um, I'm excited about all of this and and teaming up with him and seeing where else I can go with him on his tour yeah, well, very cool. I, I'd love to see in one of his movies, and I'd love to see him yep. put out more movies. That's one thing I haven't even mentioned. He's going to be showing his tribute movie to Smokey and the Bandits. Yeah, uh, I know he's going to show it Friday night. Uh, so if you if you were there at the VIP event, but if if you're not there, I think he's got probably it out on DVD, um, and I can give you guys information on that. But uh, and then and then also haven't mentioned he's filming. I think a, a sequel to that one. And so if you go over to Longdale, you actually could be in the movie because they will be filming dirt racing scenes for the movie at Longdale. So, yes. uh, so man, talk about all kinds of opportunities, <laughs> celebrities being in a movie, seeing a movie, watching dirt track racing. I mean, God, it's going to be a great weekend over in Longdale. 
Oh, I'm excited. I've been filming a movie for the past year called Pray They Stand Down. Uh, it's a movie about a veteran that goes off to war and experiences a whole bunch of uh, horrible things and comes back to the United States, gets up with a service dog and um, a lot of bad things happened to him during this film, which I won't give away, but, um, I've been, I've been very blessed to be in that and filming that with him. And I've got a uh, few other, uh, movies that, uh, I've got some roles for that are in the works that I'm, I'm hoping come to fruition, fruition, uh, with financing and stuff. And, uh, hoping that I can get in some of John's movies and we'd love to see everybody out there. The more people get back to this movie, the better. Yeah. Well, and just to let you know, I don't know if you're aware of it, you know, being in Missouri, you may be, but Oklahoma is a movie state. So we give yes. a lot of rebates to people that come film. And I know I just got told the other day that Enid itself is going to have four major movies. One could be with Ron Howard coming to our area. Oh, wow. And then we've got Leonardo and his yes. filming over on Pahuska right now. So I, well, tell John his next movie Film it over here in uh, around the Enid area. We would, I mean, we'll roll out the red carpet for you guys, and uh, would love to see you guys over here. Uh, and I'm excited. I'm kind of a because I'm kind of this media guy. I get to do a lot of the fun stuff, like fly with the Thunderbirds and come and see you guys and interview yeah. you and stuff like that. And so I've I've done some extra work. You know, I was I was in Wildlife with Jake Gyllenhaal and a movie down in Guthrie with uh, Bo Derek. But I'm not wanting to be an actor, but I like the fun of being behind the scenes and actually seeing how yep. it works and the cameras and the sound and people just wouldn't believe and the boredom, you know, you, you think these <laughs> celebrities, you know, it's all limos and say, and it's not, man. I mean, there's a lot oh. of, I, I bet tell everybody, I mean, tell everybody a little bit about being in a movie. Oh yeah. It's, it is totally different, you know, because there is, there's a, there, there's a lot of downtime because you don't have all the act. You see a movie. And you might have six or seven major actors in it or, or A-listers in it. They're not all there at the same time. Uh -uh. Sometimes, sometimes it's split up and they actually never see each other in the movie. You know, I, I was down with Tyler Perry filming for the haves and haves nots that John was in. And I was there for three days doing just this one bar scene. And it was totally eye-opening the way that Tyler Perry does things. That guy is a machine. You talk about that guy is an amazing director. I kudos to him for everything that he's done because to get down there and to watch him, he steps on scene. He knows what he wants. The people that's working with him knows what he wants. And it's just boom, 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 boom. Wow. And all of a sudden you're done. Oh, there wow. were very, very few second takes with Tyler Perry because he had the most amazing crew and the most amazing actors down there working for him. But it's true. Not everybody is on scene together and there's a lot of downtime. And, you know, there's there's a lot that goes on to it, especially during COVID. All these actors that you see, and nobody liked that COVID that shoved up your nose. Nobody liked that. Those guys were getting it every time they stepped on set. Oh, man. And and then I, I did, there was several movies that were being filmed that I did not go because you had to get tested one day. Mm -hmm. You had to drive to another town to get tested. Then you had to drive the next day to get fitted. Then you had to drive a third day to do the actual filming. And I was like, I just can't spend three days for one, one small part, you know? So, so yeah. I haven't done a movie in, in probably a year, year and a half because of the whole COVID thing. So yeah, um, there is, there's a lot of waiting. There's some days that there's some days that you'll have a scene that's maybe an hour or two long that you're filming for. And the rest of the day, you've got to be on standby. So you're sitting there doing nothing, but eating and drinking, reading it over your lines to make sure that you're ready to go for the next scene. Yeah. So remind everybody, do you have any idea when your, your movie's coming out? Do you guys have any take on that yet? On Pray They Stand Down, I don't. We're, uh, okay. we're actually trying to fundraise some more money to finish the film. Okay. Uh, so if there's anybody out there that is looking to back a film, um, it's going to be amazing. We've got some good actors in it. Um, I play a detective in the movie that uh, assists the soldier returning from overseas that uh, is going through these life turmoil uh when he's back here in the united states and um so it it has been good every every chance that we get every every little bit of money that we get uh we're putting into the movie to continue the filming and continue the process because i served in the army uh so i'm very passionate about this i was overseas in afghanistan and iraq so i know what uh, the soldiers are going through and this is a passion of mine to get out to 
the world so that they can see and try to take that bad stigmata of PTSD off of people's minds. Oh, well, very cool. Kudos to you for serving and all the stuff that you've done and, and with your police. Thanks. Work. So how can, if people wanted to donate to that, if they just wanted to ask you questions, if they just want more information on you, if they want dog training from online, tell people the best ways to get a hold of you. Yeah, I'm verified on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, so they'll always know that it's my account and not some imposter that they're talking to. Uh, my inbox is open on all my accounts. They can send me messages. Um, I have a public Facebook profile, James Craig Mile. It's actually a picture of Val Kilmer and I. Oh, cool. um, I got to meet Val Kilmer. It was, I think, in 2018 or 2019. I don't remember when we filmed America's Top Dog. I went out there and another mutual friend of mine knew Val Kilmer and had met him before and got a hold of him. So whenever I got out there, Val had said, yeah, come on down, hang out with me. So I actually, whenever I was in LA, got to go down and hang out with Val at his place wow. and watch uh, a short film called Cinema Twain and uh, talk to him about a couple of new movies that he has coming out aside from Jay and Silent Bob and Top Gun 2 and all these other ones that he's doing a movie that he's going to be producing and directing. Uh, so hopefully uh, we talked about a role in that movie for me as well. Uh, so anyway, that's my Facebook profile is Val Kilmer and I. Wow. Um, and then I'm on TikTok. Anybody can send me messages on TikTok. Um, I think that's the, the main ones that I have. But yeah, if, if anybody wants to know any information about canine training, www.craigmile canine. Actually, it's on my shirt right here. Oh, uh, Craig Mile right, canine right. training. I'm actually training some dogs today, uh, dot com. So go there, look it up. If you have questions, just send me some questions and I'll be able to answer it. But uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I'm going to get a John's movie. I've been doing acting since I was 16 years old, uh, acting and modeling. So I've got uh, that in my blood. My grandfather was a comedian uh, down in Branson, Missouri for many, many years. Uh, so it's in my blood and something that I'm extremely passionate about. Very cool. I'm going to take, this is going to sound a little weird, but I'm going to take a selfie of you and I to let everybody know that this interview is, is on it, is coming soon. Let's do it. So I'm going to zap that. Okay. So again, you guys are going to be in Longdale uh, this Friday night. You're going to be there all day Saturday. You're going to be there Sunday morning. Tickets, they can go to Bose extravaganza.com or I think it's um, John Schneider studio.com as well. Um, you guys can get tickets there again, watching it buzz all week long. I'm going to be giving away tickets. Uh, if I can, I'm going to get over there Friday night. If you guys are available, we'll try to do a live Facebook live from over there Friday night to encourage people to come on Saturday, but uh, just a huge amount of events in Longdale, Oklahoma, only an hour away from me and you guys, you guys got to get out and uh, get some fresh air and enjoy these guys. Anything else uh, you got to say before we get out of here? No, I can't. I just hope that everybody comes out to see us, get tickets, get online to VIP. I think there's only a hundred tickets. But I'm telling you, the VIP night is going to be awesome. So if you can get those VIP tickets, come out, meet all of us Saturday, hang out, have fun, and uh, just a, a good, wholesome hearted family event. Great. Well, thank you, James. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, and we look forward to seeing you this weekend. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Yeah.